Hey everybody, welcome to Track Talk, the legendary drumming of Ringo Starr with my very special guest, Greg Bissonette. Who better than Greg to do a deep dive into Ringo's drumming? He's not only Ringo's biggest fan, but he's been his drummer since 2008 in the All-Star Band. So come along for the ride with Greg and me. I think you're going to really like this episode. We left no stone unturned, as they say. So uh, this is part one of two parts, and uh, I do hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. And check out part two. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks. I'd like to welcome the returning champion, if there ever was a returning champion, my good friend, the one and only Greg Bissonette. Please welcome Greg. Buddy, I love you, man. I love you too, brother. So good to we see you. We've known each other so long. When did I we know. meet? 1985, Greg. 1985. <laughs> And I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, this is what I remember from that first time I met you, that we instantly bonded over Ringo. I remember us talking about Ringo, and here's this, this person, person I just met, you just met, and, like, and we became buddies like instantly from that. So. There's so, so, much, so many drummers all over the world have either started playing because of Ringo or gotten friendships together like you and I because of talking about yeah. Ringo. Talking about the Ed Sullivan show, seeing them live, just anything. Such a great bonding point. Ringo! Ringo. Ringo does it all. And talk about seeing him live. Let's take a second before we jump into the Track Talk episode. By the way, thank you for being here today, Greg. Thank you so, for having me. So appreciate it. And you got to see Ringo. Your dad got you and your brother and your sister tickets to see Ringo in 1966? Yeah, what happened was my dad was playing... Uh, a gig with his band at the ambassador hotel and he came out in the lobby and he just saw thousands of screaming you know young kids and teenagers and people in their 20s and he asked the food and beverage manager guy who was his friend i know this because he kept telling me the story over the evening <laughs> what's going on why are all these screaming girls in the lobby but the beatles are staying upstairs they're playing tomorrow night at olympia hockey arena in detroit and my dad said, wow, could you get me close to six tickets? And he said, I don't know, you minus the Beatles. They've been sold out for six months, but I like you. You're a good guy. Come back after the gig. I'll see what I can do. And my dad went back into the bar, and the guy said, I got you six tickets, but it's going to cost you. It's going to be 36 bucks total. <laughs> and so he came home. My, my sister was too young, and she stayed home. My mom stayed home with my sister, but my brother, Matt, and my dad and I went, and we had some neighbor friends. Oh, okay. We yeah. were there, Detroit Olympia Hockey Arena, 66. Oh. Wow. What you think about is, I'm in the same room with these four guys. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then years later, right, when you guys were with, with the All-Star Band with Ringo, you played in Detroit. Did you guys drive by the, well, what the site? Happened, of we were playing at the Fox Theater. And after sound check, during sound check, I said, Ringo, just a few blocks from here is where you played at Olympia Hockey Arena, where I saw you in 66. He said, wow, that was right near here. Let's go. We'll get a car. We'll go after the sound check. And I said, man, unlike Europe, where they don't tear down buildings of historical significance, we do in America. And it's a parking lot now. He said, ah. But after the first song, he said, I was talking to my friend on the other kit, and when he was seven, in 66 he went to see the he went to the other place to see us and i was like oh my gosh uh, and Ringo was going to be 83 years young in a few weeks on july 7th and man we just finished a month-long tour he is so fit and so in shape and he exercises so great and, and his, his eating habits are so wonderful and he's about peace and love johnny as you know you know where yeah. go he loves you, man. You'd often come to the gigs before. Where was that outdoor gig in Boston where you came? It's I've uh, I've come to see you a bunch of times at a boy. I don't know what it's called now, but it used to be called um, the Fleet Pavilion, Bank of America Pavilion, right on the water there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great. It's a great you spot. Up some one time. That's right for his seventieth birthday. Yeah, for his seventieth. There you go. That was, that was really, that was so memorable. I, I'll tell you, that was bef at the sound check. I remember this. I tell this story. You had me come early. I came to sound check. Jeff Jonas brought me in and I'm standing behind you and Ringo. And he was showing you the intro to come together. I remember you, he, you guys were both playing it and I'm just, and you looked over at me and you saw me and you waved and you, and you had this look in your face, like, 
can you believe this? Ringo is, I'm sitting here with Ringo and he's, <laughs> I know, I know. I just, and I, you know, we're, we'll, we'll start talking about some music in a minute, but I just want to, I want to ask you and, and for everybody watching this, what it must feel like every night being up there with him, because this guy, I, Greg, I've known you 40 years. And from the day I met you, your favorite, this isn't like a new thing. Cause you got the gig with Ringo. He's your favorite drummer. He's always been your favorite drummer. And you, oh. you play in his band for 15 years. You've been his drummer. It's, it's you know what's crazy is in 03, I got the gig with this other band called Ringo and the Roundheads. <coughs> and my brother, Matt, who's right. in Elton John's band, they're over in Europe on this long Goodbye Yellow Brick Road tour. He played bass in the Roundheads. He had a Hoffner and he played bass and I played drums. That was 03. So it's been 20 years. It was 20 years ago in the year. <laughs> 2003 to 2008, and in 2008, the all-star band. So it's just unbelievable. And what I think about, I look five feet to my right at soundcheck and at the gigs, and I think, man, I'm playing next to the guy that got me into wanting to be in a band and still yeah. wanting to be in a band, his band, Ringo Starr and his all-star band. And even though we just finished this first leg of 2023 tour, uh, Saturday night in San Jose, we start up again, September 15th on an East Coast tour. So he's just, he just loves playing. And one of the things I'd love to point the uh, listeners and viewers to is Ringo's masterclass on masterclass.com. Yes. One of the great things he says in there, and it's the greatest way to hear firsthand about his playing and his life. Watch Ringo on masterclass.com. He, the last thing he says before it signs off is, the more you play, the better life is. Oh, that's so oh, beautiful. Thank yeah. You, right? It's true it's, for all it's, of us. The more we play, the better life is. Exactly. That's that's that just sums it right up. I mean, I right, we we can both any drummer watching this can relate to that. That's yeah. and you've got your left handed Ludwig kit, <laughs> your cool band. Your band is called uh, it's a video game name. What's your band called? Grand Theft Audio, but close Grand to Theft Auto. Yeah. Grand Theft Audio. Do you play Beatles songs in Grand Theft Audio? Yeah, we do. We do. A couple of them that we're going to talk about today, in fact. Yeah. And so. I know Kelly. One time you were working on help. She said, "Why are you playing that over and over? Because it's hard. Right. It's double stops." Oh man, I know. I still struggle with that song, Greg. We're going to talk about that. And yeah, and and, and she, hopefully she's not going to see this. She might. No. Um, she was. She was just telling me to like move on from that. Like don't, don't, don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, I have to work on this. I have to get this right. Because Ringo does it effortlessly without thinking about it. Oh my God. We, we have to really work on it. Yeah. Double stops that fast, you know. Yeah. It's hard and you know he. And we'll, and we'll get to this too. And Ticket to Ride, I know you've talked about this too. That one, that one spot where he does that little, do, 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 that little like sixteenth, yeah, yeah. And they're all yeah. even. Ba 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 ba. Michael, his are yeah. so perfect. I know. So so the way you played that was your you played your did Ringo play it with his right hand on the tom tom or his left? You think probably played on, it that way. On Ticket to Ride. On Ticket to Ride. That that. I think it's this. And then both hands together. And so, uh, but what's interesting, because you're a lefty, and he's a lefty, but he's on a right-handed kid. You're a lefty, Johnny, but you're on a left-handed kid. If you watch the videos of Help, when John counts it off, one, yes. two, three, four, Help, you, hear, you see and hear him leading with his left hand on the high hand. Crash two, three, four, one, two, three, four, crash two, three. So he's leading with his left hand on the high end. And whenever he starts fills, I go on my favorite yeah. people film. But he leads left. It's so cool. It's so cool. I, I watched that the video from Ed Sullivan over and over, the help video when he's doing that. And I didn't know that. It, you know, I mean it, it wasn't until I got hip to watching the video. Like listening to the record, I assumed, you know, he was playing it with his right hand, but but it just it it opens it up to showing you just how unbelievable he is, you know, his his ambidextrousness, you know, in terms of like what he could do in the kit. Because on a lot of songs, like Help, he's leading with his right hand. Yeah. 
And if we, we do what goes on and we do act naturally, and those are those are fast, you know, what goes on and all I gotta do is act. and he's just going like this. And so how he has the other day I said, he came up to his kid and I said, Man, we had just played uh, what goes on. And I said, Man, the stamina of your right hand and he just said, Yeah, I don't really think about it. I just do it, you know. So his left is so strong because he's a lefty. Yeah, yeah. but his right hand da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da -ka. endurance is amazing. It is, yeah. And and I, I'll just say too, I think we talk a lot about a lot about Ringo being left-handed and the fact that he you know he starts his fills with his left hand typically, maybe not every time, but often he'll do that. But I think, in in addition to that, what makes him so special is just what you just said that. His, his left hand and his right hand are almost like equally strong, whereas most right hand drummers right, have a, you know, really have to work on their, well, no, not you, but. It's, oh, guilty, for sure. My right's way stronger than my left. Yeah. And someone never knows. I know we're jumping around, but that's a great example. Yeah. Uh, excuse me for jumping, but I used to play it like this. And then he jumped up on the kit and he didn't take the right hand off the cymbal. He's, Because his left hand's so strong and so yeah. consistent, so is his right hand. Wow. Well, let's want to play some music. Shall we get into some yeah. some tunes? Lead the way. All right. So the first tune we'll start with is one that we both love. In fact, we love all these songs, but this is "I Feel Fine." And maybe you could set this up a little bit and just talk about what Ringo's part. Yeah. Yeah. Was. So I know just from being Ringo's friend for twenty years, I know how much he loves. Ray Charles. And years ago, I got to play on a version. I got to play live with Ray at the record plant. And it was uh, Jerry Hay producing an album for Ray of duets. And um, he Ray did uh, You Are My Sunshine. And it was a shuffle like. You are my sunshine. And Jimmy Johnson was playing bass. Anyway, I, I sent it to Ringo. I said, check this out. And he goes, wow, you're playing with Ray on a song. Ray is one of his favorite musicians. And so my good friend and roommate when I was living in Dallas in North Texas uh, was John Bryant. And John Bryant is a great Dallas drummer. He plays with all kinds of people. He works a lot with Stuart Copeland uh, on his stuff. And he's played with Joe Walsh. He's played with Don Henley. He had a band called Firework in Dallas. I used to be in a band called Buster Brown. And John and I are really good friends. And John, you know, he's told me many times that, you know, baby, what I say, do, 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 that's definitely. One, two, three, four, and one, two. And one time he changed it around and Ray said, Johnny, don't ever change that around. It's one, two, three, pop up. But on I Feel Fine, I'm sure it was influenced by what I say. But Ringo flips it. And instead of going one, pop, do, boom, boom, he goes one, boom, boom, pop. Boom, bam, bada, boom, bam, 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 bam. So he put, and I've got tea towels. Gary Estridge, we'll talk about Gary in a minute, but Gary has RingoStarDrumsets.com. Gary Estridge is a Ringo drum set aficionado, and he got me these Abbey Road tea towels. You see these the back movie. Uh, Ringo used tea towels quite a bit. He started us on the little tea towel thing. So I've got tea towels on my snare rack and floor. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to play, I feel fine. You'll hear that. Dun, 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 bop. All right. Well, we'll play a little bit of this track. Here we go. Yeah. I feel fine. You know that middle break where it's like boom, bap, ba, da, boom, bam, bam, and then he plays that on bop, 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 bop. That's a really cool break. I remember playing I feel fine and jamming along at sound check with Ringo. And he's, do you know the middle break? Can you play that middle break? It's kind of somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Put you on the spot. There's like a little breakdown. Yeah. I want me to play it right now. Can you find it? It's such yeah, a abso cool absolutely. Absolutely. Hang on a second. When I came to your house that time, Greg, I'm I'm sure that was one of the songs we played together when we played double drums. I and bet the, it was. I mean, yeah. There's so many 
And the ones we're going to talk about today are, are some of our favorites. But there's so many. Like Ringo really plays with the lyrics. He plays with the vocals. He plays with the riffs. He's not coming up with fills just because they're cool fills. He's coming up with fills that work. Yeah. I mean, they just work lyrically and yeah. melodically. You know what I found too, Greg, as I got older, you know, I, I loved listening to him as a, as a, as a youngster, just because I love the music so much and I love the drums. And then, you know, we get older and you start really like listening to things more critically and like really breaking stuff down. And I realized to play what Ringo plays the right way correctly is it's, it's nothing, not nothing, but many of his parts are not what they sound like or, or seem to be until you try to play them. Right. And then you realize, wait a minute, he's actually like you will, we'll, we'll talk about this when we get to drive my car, but that intro, um, well, I used to think it was just a little, uh, syncopated do to do, but it's, it sounds like he's doing like a do 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 like, do you know what I mean? I'm sure you I can do. play it. I can't really. I can't wait to talk about drive my car. But one of the reasons I think you hit it on the head, it seems like something different than it is. And I think the reason for that is his swing factor. Ringo yeah. has so yeah. much swing in his playing. And I know that he loves Cozy Cole. He loves Topsy. I get to play Yellow Submarine on trumpet. When he goes, <laughs> in the band, big ass triple A. And, and just fun playing, you do it standing up. Okay, we're just playing kicker. We often jam on Topsy. Topsy's a cozy call song. ba da ba dee poop ba poop ba poo da ba And that swing, that floor tom swing, he just loves the swing. And when he puts these fills in there on I Feel Fine, on Drive My Car, on Rain, on so many of the songs we're going to talk about today, it's just got that feel that swing that lope that moves it and percolates it and so yeah. a lot of people try to emulate it but it's only he can do it the right way the i way know he... and I, and i learned that too like you know playing beatles songs as a, as a youngster like i'd i'd play what i thought was the right sticking and you know the the put the spaces where it needed to be or put the fills where they need to be but now when i listen to what he plays it's I, I, you know, it's just, it's so creative. It's so like the parts are such a big, to me, they're such a huge part of the composition of the song, you know, and we're going to talk about some of those songs as we go along here that, that are like just such a big part of the song, what he came up with for a drum part. And let's, let's jump ahead to She Loves You. Yeah. And, uh, and this is, this is, this has got that great floor tom, riding floor tom part that we've talked about before. And um, should we start it off? Sure, but before you play it, I want to just yeah. mention that when I was a kid, and I'm sure when when you were a kid too, I never really heard, you just said the phrase, riding on the floor. I never yeah. really heard people with their with their riding on the floor time. I heard riding on the hi-hat. In fact, one of the number one beats that as I get older and I listen every day to Beatles songs, I think the number one most used kick drum part in my estimation, on the first several Beatle albums, isn't boom, bop, boom, bop, or boom, bop, boom, boom, bop, or boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, boom. It's this one, boom, bop, boom, boom, bop, boom, boom. And the way that goes with Paul's bass, you listen to, especially on Rubber Soul, you yeah. hear it. So many different tempos. Yeah. That's, so yeah. I, he loves you. He's riding on the floor down. But he starts with the rack down, Phil. And there's that little um bop 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 ticket to ride theme. Yeah. yeah. Start the floor top. Yeah. Let's play that intro, Jay. Oh, it's the intro is, wow. you know, yeah, I know, I know. And and then his, what he plays in the hi hat is so even and so clean. It's just that wash that he creates with that, you know, just, 
I mean, it's just, is it straight eighth notes or is he playing even just some, some even dotted ex, extra, like sort of dotted notes in there or. Well, I think, I think it's, it's like you said, it's a wash. Yeah. And it's, it's got a swing to it. It's yeah. a straight eighth note song, one and two and three and four, but it's kind of got, that wash gives it that, a little, instead of this. Yeah. Yeah. Wash in the loose hat. like a life of its own yeah yeah it's so great let's play a little bit more of it man too johnny when you think about how old ringo was this song she loves you it was recorded six days before ringo's 23rd birthday it was july 1st 1963 six days before he turned 23 and man his maturity to play the right parts for the songs he'd already been playing you know, in the Beatles and, and the Cavern and playing in, in the Reaper Bond in Hamburg. He'd already been playing with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes and the Eddie Clayton Skiffle group. He'd been playing a lot by the time he was 23. Yeah, a lot of yeah. I know, but it. But I, I think about that too. I think about the fact that, you know, they recorded uh, Abbey Road and Let It Be when he was 28, basically. I mean, it's... And and that song, like you said, twenty two years old. It's unbelievable that, like, he had the, the maturity and and the you know when I was twenty two, I would have played a fill anywhere I could. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh look, there's there's four bars. I I'm gonna just play something right now and, yeah, but always a band guy. Even you know today with the All Star Band since nineteen eighty nine, he's had the All Star Band. It's a band, yeah, and we yeah. knew everybody's versions our versions of everybody's songs like right now it's steve lukather from toto we do africa rosanna hold the line but we do it our way we you know ringo just wants to make it our own and colin hay you know we do overkill who can it be now land down under but we do it our way yeah and yeah you know, frankenstein free ride uh, he does a version of, of Johnny Be Good from Edgar's album that I had to, by the grace of God, I got to play on 16 of the 17 songs. It's called Brother Johnny, and it won a Grammy for Best uh, Blues, Contemporary Blues album this year. But he did a version of uh, Johnny Be Good, and we play that. And on this crash, where he goes right in, man, he's washing it with the shoulder, you know, ah, yeah. we can do that together. He's like, come on, let's do it together. We do it together. <laughs> and Ringo played on of one of the songs too, Stranger, on that album. It's a great album, Edgar's album. But we kind of make everybody's songs our own. Hamish Stewart from The Average White Band, pick up the pieces, work to do, and cut the cake. But we, we, we make them our own versions, and we jam. And he's a band guy. He's yeah, all yeah. about playing in the band. He never sat down on the drums and just said, I'm going to work on this fill or this beat. Everything he did, and he talks about this a lot in Masterclass, came from playing in a band. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can, you can feel that about him, that he's, 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 he's all about being an accompanist to, to the music. It's not about him. He's, you know, and I, I think he's, I it was either a masterclass or somewhere where he talked about one of his, you know, one of his philosophies, I guess, if for lack of a better word was never play a fill where there's a vocal, right? I mean, never, never play something when there's like support the vocal all the time and let that be what drives the song. And that's, that's perfect, right? I mean, and instead of looking at a chart, you know, and, and a drum part or a guitar chart or a chord chart, he, he'd rather have the lyrics. So he knows when the lyrics are, you know, singing and when they're not singing. And he always fills around the vocals so well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what a just a, an incredible, like, musician, but like his mind, you know, the fact that he, you know, he just knows instinctively what to play all the time. You know, I mean, that, that's what I get. Listen, Johnny, you've talked to Ringo. Yeah. He's a great listener. He yeah. looks in the eye and he listens to what you're saying. And then he responds just like we're supposed to have conversations like we're having now. A lot of drummers, they don't really listen to what the rest of the band's doing. They're too busy thinking about what fill am I going to do in eight bars or in a bar. He's not thinking about what he's going to do. He's listening. He's yeah. listening vocals he's listening to the band and then he plays like you said the word you just had accompanist yeah he plays for the song that's what it's about yeah yeah like like you know there's so many great drummers that we know are you know friends of ours and heroes of ours but i i think ringo 
you know, really is like in another place when it comes to being a guy, a, a drummer that plays for the song that really, that's, that's what it's always been about. And I, you know, I used to try to explain it to people, um, you know, when we were younger and, and you'd have, you know, disagreements, arguments with other drummers who'd say, well, you know, he, this guy's a better drummer because he has more cymbals and more drums than Ringo or, you know what I mean? And that whole argument. And, and what I used to try to explain to people was like, yeah, but listen to this song and you'll hear Ringo play this part that I, most drummers would have never come up with, but it just fit this spot. It, maybe it, it, he, he sits out playing the hi-hat in this one spot. He's just playing the bass drum and the snare drum and leaving that space open for the rest of the, you know, maybe George is playing something or, and. Sounds like you're talking about come together. Well, there you go. There's a great example. Yeah. There's a lead in. Yeah. Yeah. Should we, should we jump ahead? We don't have to go in any sort of chronological. Let's, let's talk about that song. Yeah. Because he doesn't play. You know, when, when, when John's singing, hold you in his arms, yeah, you can be, he's not playing high end. He's not playing snare. He's just playing, like you said, the bass drum. Yeah. Hold you in his arms, yeah, you can feel his disease. And when the guitar and the bass, boom, 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 boom a lot of drummers would have gone, boom, 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 yeah. which is fine, but he plays rhythmically melodic with that part and i'm not going to be able to i don't i don't have a, a a third tom i only have a four piece kit here with my tea towels and i'm not going to attempt to do the perfect ringo putting on the floor down leading left as he's told me many times he did i'm going to play it the way i've always played it yeah that's not the way he would play it on that kit that come together kit the get back kit he's playing you know, as he says, yeah. leading towards on and going up. That's a, a topic for a lot of discussions. But anyway, he doesn't play um, the the hi hat in the chorus. He either he just plays "Come Together" right now over me, and then floor tom and bass drum on the verse. He wear no shoes, shine. He got toes. Why don't we play it and everybody yeah. will get the idea. You don't have to play the hi-hat all the time, the ride cymbal all the time. You can play parts of the kit that work for parts of the lyrics, parts of the song. This is probably one of the greatest drum tracks, one of the greatest composed drum parts ever. It's another one um, we play. It's a it's a, a fun song to play. Just a, you know, and, and I, I, I'll just say not to, we're talking about you, we're talking about Ringo here, but... Um, I, I always feel like I owe it to Ringo to play it as close to the right way as possible. Like, you know, not maybe not note for note, but it's got to have that, you know. Do you have a four piece or a, a, a five piece? A four what? piece. Yeah. yeah. A four piece. A four piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I, I wanted to, I really wanted to talk about that song because I feel like that's a song that, as you said, you know what it is right away. And I remember there was a tribute to Ringo years ago and a bunch of people got up and played that. And that's, you know, that's like an anthem for drummers, right? I mean, that's one of those songs that we all, like you cut your teeth learning how to play Come Together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, with the All-Star Band, uh, we do Frankenstein and it's uh, Ringo uh, takes a break and goes back and uh, we do that with just me playing drums and Edgar said, play drum solo. And I thought instead of playing a brrrr all the time kind of drum solo like most shows, you know, I thought I'd, I'd quote a bunch of songs. And I thought, I wonder if it's it's okay to quote come together. And I thought, I've got a quote come together. I start with We Will Rock You, boom, boom, rock, and get the people singing, We Will. But that's the same tempo. Dun, 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 dun. And Steve Lukather sits over by the side and he plays the don't, 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 don't. And I quote Ticket to Ride, Honky Tonk Woman, Immigrant Song, Wipeout, Hot for Teacher, The End. But I thought, I got to quote Ringo, you know, because this yeah. is an all-star band, and he's my favorite drummer of all time, my favorite song drummer. And those parts, I mean, that on the end, we can talk about that later too, but what a classic eight bars. He's not a drum solo guy, but those eight bars, first of all, they're perfectly in tempo, oh. and he's got a metronome to it, even though there was no metronome. But just the rhythmical 
rhythmically melodic way he played that. So I don't want to steal the show and jump from song to song. No, you lead no. Away. Okay. And, and, you know, I just, I'll, I'll just reinforce what you just said, Greg, which is like, you know, again, the older I get, the more I, I listen to him and I go, my God, he really was, you know, I remember reading like stuff George Martin would say about, you know, he had a great sense of, great sense of rhythm. You know, he had a great, George was so, you know, such a legend, but so sort of understated in that way, like saying he had a, he had a fine sense of time. He had unbelievable, has unbelievable time. It's, you listen to those records, like you said, there were no click tracks. There was no um, pro tools to fix stuff. And his time is like, we take it for granted. It's so amazing. It's so perfect. And no matter what anybody says, he's told me many times, tomorrow never knows is not a loop. That's him playing. Right, right. That holds its its chorus the whole way. All these songs, and they could edit things together. George Martin said because of Ringo's time and groove and consistency. Yeah, yeah, right. Which right, you couldn't do that back then unless you had that perfect consistency. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah, well, you know, let's let's jump backwards a second to um, we were just talking about Ticket to Ride, and I I just you know I made a note here because. You know, I, I think even Ringo himself probably would say something like, well, you know, I don't I don't play any rudiments. I don't you know, he's he's so humble in terms of like his his technical ability. And I think when you listen to the, the single stroke roles in this song, I mean, forget about it. To me, I again, I listen to this song over and over and I, I would love to be able to play those singles as clean as he does throughout the song. Yeah. You know, Johnny, when people talk about rudiments and, you know, you and I know, I mean, we did drum line and drum corps. I did drum corps in North Texas. I mean, I really think I know my rudiments, but someone once said there's only two rudiments, singles and doubles. If you think of a single stroke roll and a double stroke roll, then you think of a paradiddle. It's a single and a double and a single and a double. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Ringo talks. I mean, he knows singles, he knows doubles, he knows paradiddles, and he knows flams. And so, whether yeah. you're playing pataflaflas or hurtas or, you know, uh, flam paradiddles or lesson number 25 or a five stroke roll, a seven stroke roll, a nine stroke roll, a 13 stroke roll, a pataflafla, whatever you're playing, they're all combinations of singles and doubles. And like you just said in Ticket to Ride, it's a masterclass on singles. She's got a ticket to ride. Yeah. And then double stops. I played a lot of marimba in college where you four mallet marimba. When the hands are playing together. Yeah. Those are double stops. The Tony Williams way would be flams. Marimba's right. way. That's very, very hard to do. <sighs> Yeah, how consistent these are. Yeah, impossible for someone like me. I'll be, I'll tell you right now when I hear and this that's song. Just the thrills, Johnny. But when you think about the guitar part, it's not. There's a swing there, and then later he changes it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, what a great lead in. Let's listen to some. Yeah, let's let's listen to this. Favorite, Phil. Talk about taste and restraint and discipline. Just the blob. She's got a ticket to ride. <laughs> that is that is hard to do because you're you're in the recording studio. You're doing all this stuff. A lot of people would be, oh, I got a big space to. She's got a ticket to ride. <laughs> What can I do to go on oh, the drum? No, how about she's got a ticket to ride? Can you fast forward to that, Phil? I think Absolutely, so yeah. And again, yeah. And and to me, right? It and it puts such a period, like a like a hard stop to that point. Again, it's such a great you know, well thought out part that I'll bet he really didn't even think that much. He just knew to do it, right? He just yeah, knew. He didn't th I bet you too. He didn't think. He yeah. just. You said period. It's like a period or it's like an exclamation point. A lot Ex of yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Cool. Let's let's see if I can. The song grooves too during those during the chorus parts where he's just playing the hi-hat, just the straight eighth note part on the hi-hat. It just he goes from this the little syncopated thing to that 
straight groove. It's just the way compliments. Even though, even though when I was a little kid, I thought he was going, my baby no kid. He's not doing that. His his percussion, the tambourine is doing it. Yeah. You know, it gives that double time feel, even though he's playing. But think about where the tambourine goes in that beat. And the way he played tambourine and claves, bongos, rubber soul, especially, you're gonna lose that girl. It's like a bongo feature. And yeah. so bongos, he plays timpani, every little thing she does. Boom, 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 boom. He's got timpani, claves, uh, maracas, a lot of maracas. Yeah. Bongo. Wow, Gary Estridge brought out a set of period piece Ludwig uh, bongos, like the kind he played, that you reached underneath and turned tuned with a key underneath the in the bongo. Wow. And we sat around playing those at soundcheck. I think we said, we sang, you don't realize how much I need you. And he just started playing and it was, it was just like it was, the, we were back wow. in that yeah. moment. His percussion playing is phenomenal. I was going to say, you know, it never gets any credit for that either. Like the the, like the maracas are, are not an easy instrument to play correctly. Again. And in Masterclass, he goes over it, man. He talks about how he played the maracas, the way it was parallel. He's got the same kind of maracas he used and the bongos and, and the hand claps. Nowadays, when you do an album, if Grand Theft Audio went in the studio and did an album, you would probably hire Luis Conte to come out and play percussion or Lenny Castro or somebody. But, well, why don't we just have Johnny D play percussion? Well, he's the drum set guy. You're a specialist. Now, Ringo was a drum set and hand percussion specialist for those yeah. songs. Yeah. And, right, I, you know, when you think about how all the guys, Ringo, of course, but all the, all the guys in the Beatles just picked up whatever instrument they had to pick up to, to cut the track. I mean, when you watch the Get Back movie, you see, I want to say that the original version of Let It Be was John, Paul was on piano, John playing bass, I think, for the basic track. And I think, I think I read that. And then when they went, they went back and Paul ended up recording the final bass track for that. But I think you see John playing bass. Is it the Get Back, Peter Jackson? Oh. Or, eight hours of just pure joy. Because you see these guys creating the songs. The way Paul starts strumming the bass, Jojo was him, and then they oh. all come in, and it's what a what a masterpiece. I mean, let it be. The original one was a little bit of of a it was a little more sad because it was more of like a movie of them kind of showing that they were breaking up, you know, in George. Yeah. But get back is a celebration of how much fun they had and how much they loved each other. Absolutely. So you, um, creating. You see Ringo back there on his drums, and he's always ready to go. He's ready to go. He's such a song band guy. Every time, Greg. I know. I that's that's exactly what I took away from that was like, my God, there were time there were moments or or periods of time where he's sitting there while they're figuring something out and or whatever they're doing, he's just sitting there. And then when it's time to go, he goes. They hit the red light, and he's perfect every time. Every time, consistently. Like so consistent. So yeah. consistent. What a, what a band. So reliable, yeah. Um, well, the next song I want to play is, is one that we've talked about many times. And I think you told me this story that I never knew that our friend Stan Lynch from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers based one of his most famous songs, Breakdown, off of this song. And I think you know the song when I tell you that. Yeah, in and, my life. You in know, my life, yeah. Stan and I have talked so much about how, and you and I too, about how he didn't go, there are places I remember. He played the hi-hat, one hi-hat per bar. One. And when I asked Ringo, the first time I met him in 03, when we were playing together, I said, how did you come up with that part to, in my life? And he thought for a second, he said, <laughs> I think I just did what I did on Anna. Anna. <laughs> and that's part of the Alexander song. And that's what the drummer on that song played too. But he... He knew that beat. He had it in his head. And he thought that's going to be the perfect beat to bring in on John's In My Life. But again, those double stops, he plays those between uh, the double and the cymbal. And he always goes to the bell. on the, He loves to go to the bell of the cymbal on the chorus. But he goes. <laughs> S 
so consistently and so even. And Stan said, yeah, that's where I got the vibe of, I put a, more of a swing on it. I don't care if you love it. I break down. But he said, I got that from Ringo. I mean, so many of us, we, we do sessions, we do recording sessions for albums, movies, TV shows, demos, whatever it is. And people often say, can you put kind of a Ringo fill in there? It could be one of my favorite ones. Or it could be like rain or like the end. That Ringo swing, people ask for it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Man, You've had it and, no, you know, and, and I'll just say, to, just to, to just emphasize what you just said about in my life too, that, that double stop thing. Again, I, I would love to hear from other drummers that either play this song or have tried to play it. If, if they, I, I struggle to, to play it the way he does it, to make it sound as even as he does with my, my weak right hand. In my case, it's my right hand, it's my weak hand. But to play it, sometimes it'll happen for me. But in many instances, it's, I got no problem playing those 16th, it's like a 16th note, right? With the, but it's like my right hand just isn't as clean and even as my other hand. And it just, it's, yeah, here's it's, a rudiment, here, not a rudiment, but here's an exercise for drummers out there that can play their paradiddle diddles, blistering speed. Not that that's blistering, but try playing, just sit and play double stops. It's hard. It's hard. Even to put it in the right place. And you know, we do work to do. Hamish Stewart, I, I got work to do. Average white man. And Ringo, when I do this, we do that together. And sometimes we just get into this lean because he grooves so hard. When he hits his kick, he'll lean in with his shoulder and then back with the snare. And I'll be playing those and I'll look over and I, that's another one of those moments I go, I play <laughs> on my snare, on my floor time, all through the show. Oh man. And and he plays them effortlessly still, right? I mean he can just nail it. Yeah. Doesn't warm up. I'm sitting there, you know, on the base of my shoe, like this. I got a catcher's <laughs> tennis shoe, and it's a great <laughs> practice pad. It's quiet. And you can sit in the dressing room and not drive people nuts. So before every show, Johnny, I'm going like, you know, from Core North Texas, single, double, single, double, single, double. <laughs> but why are you doing that? I said, well, I'm going to play that <laughs> in Frankenstein. You know, I got it. Okay. Well, he doesn't warm up. You hit the nail on the head effortlessly. Yeah. Just, bah, 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 bang. I know when I, whenever I see you guys and I see him playing, you can see he, he's so loose. And I know you've told me he doesn't warm up. He just, it's, it's his thing. It's his, his method is to just go out and play and, and man, it works. And he's, he's not clamping down with the fulcrum and, and tight where people have, you know, wrist problems or carpal tunnel or everything. He's, he's got a, he's got a great technique, but it's, it's, it's a nice loose grip. So that helps with the swing too, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's hear a little bit of In My Life. This is yeah. such a, another. Oh, yeah. I mean, What's these that? Are... What, do you got? what do you got? <laughs> All right. All right. We're going to keep on moving down this list. Next song to talk about is Drive My Car. Um, great intro that Ringo comes in. This really odd time thing took me forever to figure it out. I know you broke it down when you did your. your um, Beatles Channel special last year to celebrate Ringo's birthday. And maybe you could just talk about that. Figure it out, Johnny. Say that again, Greg. I cut you off. Sorry. We no, that's a, no, I was just going to say it, it's it. The intro the, the, where Ringo comes in is so weird just in terms of what you might normally think of in terms of the timing. But um, it's so great. Shall I play and you it? Know what? It's weird for us because we always heard it as one being in a different place. It's like if you listen to Stuart Copeland with police songs, you might think that Spirits in the Material World starts off one different place, or Murder by Number, one is in a different place, or John Bonham, Rock and Roll. Once you know where one is, 
it's not weird at all and it's not an odd time the guitar starts on the end of four i always thought it started on one ba 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 bo be bo ba ba it doesn't go ba 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 bo be yeah yeah it goes one two three four ba 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 bo be bo ba 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 bo do 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 bang so yeah. it's one two one two three Ba do ba do bo di bo da ba da ba bo. Ask a girl. One two. Do 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 do. Bang. They knew where one was. One, two. One two three four and one and two and three four and one and two and. But when you listen to it, it's deceptive because you think the first guitar note's one. Yeah. Did you play that intro? Yeah. Let's play it. Let's listen to it again. When when they're singing. You can do something in between. He's not going. He's not spazzing out and chopsing. He's playing with those lyrics. You can do something in between. He's playing rhythmically, melodic with the vocals. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a kick pattern again. I'm not saying he uses it all the time, but he uses it, I think probably more than the other patterns on those first several Beatle albums. Yeah, and, and again, once again, just have to talk about the groove, the, the time, the feel of the song. And, you know, we haven't even really got into Ringo's feel. And, and, and that to me is the, is the secret sauce to everything is his feel. Um, it's, he was just born gifted with this incredible feel that, you know, I mean, he plays that song, as, like you said, a simple Groove in the hi hat and the bass drum and the snare drum, and he plays those accents, and it sounds so great. Well, I don't want to spoil it for those people that are going to watch Masterclass, but I'm going to entice you to watch Masterclass, masterclass.com, Ringo Starr, by telling you this little trailer. When he first started playing with the Eddie Clayton Skiffle group, their time was not good. They were rushing like crazy because they were excited. We're playing live, and people were trying to dance by playing gigs and gigs and gigs and more gigs. His time got better and the band time got better. So yeah. you can't just, you know, play your first gig and expect your feel and your time to be great. You need to play a lot. And I try to tell young musicians, play with other people. You can have the best time in the world practicing with YouTube or, and I want to plug my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. It's at Greg Drums, G-R-E-G-G -G -G, Drums, at G-R-E-G-G-D-R-U-M-S. I've got about a dozen videos so far. I'm a YouTuber now. Anyway, I want to plug <laughs> But I tell people a lot, you know, play with other musicians. You can have the best time in the world with a metronome. But when you play with a bass player who's slowing down or speeding up, or a guitar player who's slowing down and speeding up, or you play in front of a bunch of people and you're all nervous. So in Masterclass, he talks about those very first gigs and how he got better over time because we all need to play, play, play. And again, the more you play, the better life is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And by the time... You know, he'd been playing with Rory Storm for I don't know how long when he started playing with the Beatles, but obviously that was a big reason why they got him in the band was he was just, you know, with all due respect to Pete Best, I mean, he was, you know, a, a better drummer. and Absolutely, with yeah. more experience and better groove, and he'd been yeah. playing longer, and he was the top guy in Liverpool. Right. When George Martin said, you got to get the top guy, that's Ringo. That's the, yeah. the best guy. And all of a sudden, they'll all say, George and John and Paul are quoted all over the place, saying we became the Beatles then. We became the band yeah. that, we, that we were. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, and it just, you, you wonder if what they might have been if they didn't have Ringo, you know? I don't it's, even want to think about it. <laughs> yeah. I hope you enjoyed part one of Track Talk, the legendary drumming of Ringo Starr with my special guest, Greg Bissonette. Be sure to check out part two. And please subscribe to Live from My Drum Room with John D. Christopher. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you soon. Thanks.